to open your mouth this hour and say, Father, breathe on me. I've come to your presence this morning. And what I'm asking for this morning is that you come and breathe on me. Breathe on me, your living word. Breathe on me, O oh God, the power of your word. Let the power of your Holy Spirit, let us come upon my life. Let us cause a great rebirth in my heart, in my soul. Let there be a new regeneration of soul, even in my life. Open your mouth and ask God and say, Father, I come to your presence that I, that I might be renewed, that you might renew my heart again, that you might ignite the fire in my heart. Open your mouth this hour and say, Father, I come into your presence this morning, King God, glory, ignite your fire in my life, King God, glory, ignite your fire in my heart, in my spirit. Father, King of glory, I've come to your pressure that I may receive even from your throne of grace this morning. Father, King of glory, Lord God, Father, we invite the presence of your Holy Spirit. We invite your presence of your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the living God. We welcome you into this place. We welcome you. We welcome you. Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the living God. Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the living God will welcome you. Without you, we can do nothing. It's you that can cause a great rebirth. Lord God, we say the Spirit of God, no no man, except the Spirit of God that is in him. Father, King God, glory, Lord God, let that be an outpouring, even of your Holy Spirit, even into our heart this morning. Let that be an outpouring of your Holy Spirit, even in our heart this morning. Father, cause your Holy Spirit, to cause, oh God, a great transformation, even a great renewal, even in our hearts, Lord God, this morning, in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you because you are the King of glory. We exalt you because you are the Lord of Lord. Amen. Father, we come into your presence this morning to receive from your throne of grace. Amen. Because in your presence, there is power. Amen. In your presence, there is healing. Amen. Father, we pray this morning, you will touch every heart, King of glory. You will heal every heart this morning. Father, and at the end, King of glory, our life will never remain the same, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you because you are the King of glory. We exalt you because you are the Lord of Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's good to bring the praise of the Lord this morning. Amen. I'm so glad to be in the praise of the Lord this morning. I don't know about you. Are you glad to be in the presence of the Lord this morning? Yeah. And I know this morning, God will cause a great change, a turn around in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. And this morning, God wants to speak into your heart, and God wants to speak into your spirit, man. And I pray this morning, God will grant you the heart, even to receive from his throne of grace this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's have a seat. God bless you. Let's have a seat. Hallelujah. This morning, we want to quickly talk about the power of your prophecy. You know, for the past two weeks, Pastor has been talking about the people of prophecy. But this morning, we are going to look at it in a different angle this morning. And I titled it, The Power of Your Prophecy. Hallelujah. Amen. The power of of your prophecy one of the ways that God speaks to his people is through prophecy God speaks through diverse way but one of the ways crucial ways that God do speak to his people is through prophecy so this morning we want to look at how God speak to his people through prophecy and how you can activate the prophecy of God for your life. Hallelujah. Amen. At times, the reason why you are where you are is because you have refused to activate the prophecy of God concerning your life. So this morning, we are going to look at different ways in which this prophecy of God can be activated in our life. Hallelujah. So our text this morning is taken from the book of Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 1 to 14 which they read to us this morning. 
Jeremiah 29, verse 1 to 14. But quickly, I just want to quickly read from verse 4. Jeremiah chapter 29, from verse 4. It says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, unto all that are carried away captives, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem unto Babylon. And I want to jump to verse 7. It says, And seek the peace of city, whither I have caused you to be carried away, away captives, and pray unto the law for it. Thereof shall ye have peace. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets and your diviners, that ye be the midst of you, deceive you, neither akin to your dreams which ye cause to be dreamed. For they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. I have not sent them, saith the Lord. Verse 10. For thus saith the Lord, that after 70 years be, be accomplished at the Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good work towards you, in causing you to return to this place. Verse 11. For I know the thoughts I think towards you, Seer the law, taught of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Another version says, to give you what? A, a hope and what? Future. And future. Okay. To, to give you a future and a hope. Hallelujah. Amen. God has a good plan for you. And God has a good plan for me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you look at this, it's a letter of Jeremiah to the people of Israel that are in captivity. In where? In Babylon. They are in exile. They are in a strange land. They are not, they were carried in captive. They were not in their land. So which means they couldn't do what they're supposed to do. They were living as a stranger. Praise the Lord. And what they were expecting from God is just a word. Lord, where we are, what can we do? And this is how it fits. They were in the dark. When they were not able to receive from God. Until God sent Jeremiah to them. Praise the Lord. And when you look at verse 4, Thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, unto all that carried away in captives. Which means, this word, in the book of that letter, is what? It's from God. The letter was from God to the people of Israel, to tell them and to give them hope. Hallelujah. Amen. To give them hope. Many at times we as a Christian, we live in the dark. When we're not able to receive from God, when we're not able to hear from God, when we don't know the plan of God for our life, at times it, se it seems that the full shot is blank. It seems that you all hope is lost. Why? Just because you couldn't hear or you couldn't know the plan of God for your life. Praise the Lord. The Bible says the testimony of Jesus they are what? They are spirit or prophecy. Hallelujah. Amen. So this morning we are going to look at the prophecy of God concerning your life. Until they hear the word. Until they receive the word from the throne of grace for them. That was when they were able to know the next action. That where they are is not the end of their life. That God still have them in mind. Let's look at that verse 11. It says, For I know the thoughts I think towards you. So which means as a believer, God is always thinking about you. Have you ever thought of that? That God is mindful of you? And God is always thinking about you. Hallelujah. Amen. And he's not only thinking about you. He said the thinking is towards you. Hallelujah. Towards you in person. Because God knows your name. He knows your address. He knows where you live. 
He can even call you the name that other people don't know you. Hallelujah. Amen. He can call you. He knows that name. And what is that name that God always calls you? You know, when you walk with God, when, you are, when God always speaks to you, you know the particular way that God calls you. Hallelujah. Amen. He knows you. I said he knows the, the thought that he thinks towards you. Towards you in particular, in person. Hallelujah. Amen. Quickly, I just want to point out some few things here in this book of Jeremiah before we go to the study proper. When I look at verse 7, it says, And seek the peace of the city, whither I have caused you to be carried away captive, and pray unto the Lord for it, for in the peace thereof shall ye, for in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. So which means wherever you are, you need to pray for the peace of that place where you are. As you are in Indiana here, in this community, you need to continue to pray for the peace of this community. As you are in the United States of America here, you need to continue to pray for the peace of the America. Because in the peace of the America, you, you will find your peace. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Though they were in exile, in a strange land, and God is still asking them to pray for the peace of Babylon. Because at that particular time, that's where they are. That's where they live. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And another thing that God pointed out, you know, in, in searching for the prophecy of God for our life, many are being misled through false prophets. So God told them, for them to be mindful, that there will be false prophets. And the false prophets will be telling them what God is not even Tell, what God is not even saying. If you look at that verse, chapter 28, that was what happened. Ananiah was already prophesying. Saying, this is what God is saying. But when Jeremiah came, what happened? Jeremiah rebooked him and said, that was not from God. That everything he was saying, it was not from God. So I don't know too, in what way you've been hearing from a strange or false prophet. Hallelujah. Amen. Many at times, Christian believers, they are being carried away with the you know, words from false prophet. Hallelujah. Amen. But God is telling them that they need to be aware of false prophet. In the way of searching for the prophecy of God for your life, you need to be aware that there's also false prophet outside there. And I pray God will help you. He'll give you a prophecy Amen. and you fulfill your destiny in Jesus' name. Amen. So another thing that I want us to look at in that place is that when you look at verse 10, it says, For thus says the law, that after 70 years he accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good work towards you in causing you to return to this place. So another thing we need to understand about prophecy is that prophecy is time bound. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There is a specific time for the fulfillment of a particular prophecy in your life. So that's what you see here. The Bible says, For thus said the law, that after 70 years, so which means, they are sojourned in the land of Babylon. It's going to be for what? For 70 years. So which means after 70 years, they are going to get a release to go to the land in which they are going to possess. So likewise, to that particular prophecy of God concerning your life, there is a timing for it. But many Christians, when it's about to, to get to that particular time, they get weary. Doubt set in. And at times you look for shortcuts. And at the end, you will fail to get what God already, you know, planned for you. I want us to look at 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 16. 
2 Kings 4 16. Second King 4 16. Then he said, About this time, next year, you shall embrace a son. And she said, No, my Lord, man of God, do not lie. Can you do, read KJV? This is NKJV. It says, According to time of life. That's the part I'm looking at there. It says, According to time of life. So, which means there is. And he said about this season, according to the time of life. So which means there is a particular time for the prophecy of God concerning your life. So for the prophecy to be fulfilled, Bible says about this season, according to the time of life. So which means by this time next year, this prophecy will come to pass. Likewise, to that prophecy of God for your life, there is a timing for it. So quickly, what is prophecy? Prophecy reveals the intentionality of what is taking place in the inner working of God's heart and mind. Prophecy is a way at which God reveals his mind towards man. Prophecy is the way by which you get the revelations of God's mind towards man. When you want to know, because Bible says the Spirit of God knoweth no man except what? The Spirit of God that is in him. And prophecy speak to the hidden treasure that resides within every person. For the purpose to unpack the spiritual gifts, talent, purpose, and destiny of a believer. Prophecy speak to the hidden treasure. When you look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, it's talking about the hidden treasure. That treasure is what? Is the spirit of God that is in you. When you get the prophet, anytime God is giving you a prophecy, it will do what? It will speak to the hidden treasure. Who is the spirit, who is the spirit of God? That is within you. For the purpose to unpack the spiritual gifts. Which means that there is spiritual gifts. That is inside of you. And God will speak to it. There is a talent. That is within you. And God will speak to it. For the fulfillment of that prophecy. In your life. For the purpose and destiny. Of a believer. For you to achieve your purpose. Your destiny, your God's given destiny. You need to tap into the prophecy. What is the prophecy of God concerning my life? I pray. All those prophecies that God has for you, that you have received in the past, that is yet to manifest, it will come to manifestation in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Say it will come to manifestation in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. Prophecy also is the supernatural ability to awaken the heart of the people into their true God-given purpose and identity. Prophecy is the supernatural ability to awaken the heart of the people into their true God-given purpose and identity. When you hear from God, you will get the real purpose for your life. When you hear from God, you will know what to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, because when I talk about prophecy, it involves two things. It involves what? The revelation and what? And the spoken word. The revelation first. Which give you the picture, which give you the vision of what God wants you to do, and is back up with what with the spoken word. Many at times we've only seen you have seen it, but you are yet to do what to speak into it. And what God is asked, what is waiting for you to do is to do what to speak to that particular situation. 
Hallelujah. Amen. And I pray this morning God will speak into your heart and that prophecy of God for your life that has been lying dormant will come to life in Jesus' name. Amen. Say it will come to life in Jesus' name. Amen. We've read this Jeremiah 29 verse 11. which says, For I know the plan I have for you, declared the Lord. Plans to prosper and not to harm you. Plan to give you a hope and a future. So, is the plan of God is to give you a hope and a future. Proper understanding of prophecy help us preserve our faith in three distinct areas. It gives us confidence in the reliability of God's word. When you get the prophecy of God, it gives you what? It gives you confidence in the reliability of God's word. Another thing it does is that it guides us against accepting false teaching. Because every, every prophecy of God, you will see in the scripture, it will be backed up with what? With the scripture. And another thing is that it keeps our mind focused on the gospel of Jesus and redemption and the sanctuary. What is prophecy intended to accomplish? Why prophecy? Let's look at Proverbs chapter 29 verse 18. Proverbs 29 verse 18. Proverbs 20. I want to read from Amplified Bible, the classic edition. It says, where there is no vision, no redemptive revelation of God, the people perish. Hallelujah. Amen. Where there is no vision, no redemptive revelation of God, the people perish. It described the vision as what? As the redemptive revelation of God. So which means when there is no, when, when you are not hearing from God, when you don't know the prophecy of God, which, the prophecy we are talking about, which are the prophetic words of God towards your life. When you don't have it, what happened? The Bible says when they don't have it, the people perish. Hallelujah. That's why you see many Christians today, they are in state of depression. Why? Just because they don't even know what next. They don't even know what to do. And they are keeping it to death alone. But in that state, once they receive the revelation of God, what happened? The, the hope will come alive. Through prophecy, God revealed his mind to man. We shall have mentioned that before. Through prophecy, God revealed his mind to man. So when you get the prophecy, it's so that you will not perish. So that you will not be led astray. Hallelujah. Amen. Prophecy was intended to reveal a message from the true God. And also prophecy was intended to encourage obedience. At times you receive a prophecy. For what? For obedience. At times you receive some prophecy to warn you that in fulfilling your prophecy, you need to do this. You need to stay close to God. Prophecy was intended to encourage trust in God. And prophecy was intended to give hope. That was what the Bible says in the book of that Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. To give you a future and a hope. When God gives you a prophecy, it's to give you a future and to give you a hope. And I pray the prophecy of God for your life we come to fulfillment in Jesus' name. Amen. So I want us to go to personal prophecy. 
Because in prophecy, there are some prophecy that more like corporate prophecy. There are some prophecy that is more like about collective prophecy. And these are the prophecy we enjoy. The corporate prophecy, the, the collective prophecy. That's the one you enjoy by being a Christian. Hallelujah. Amen. And you only enjoy this because, the, when, because there is a boundary. When you stay within the boundary of God, what happened? All those, all those prophecies, you'll be able to tap into it. Those are collective or corporate prophecy for everybody. As I can lay hold onto it, you can lay hold onto it. But here I want to talk about personal prophecy. Which are the prophecy that is for you alone. It's specific for you. Hallelujah. I want us to look at 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 18. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 18. He says, this charge I commit to you, son, Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by then you may wage the good warfare. Praise the Lord. He says, this charge I commit to you, son, Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you. So which means this particular prophecies? Are the prophecies specific for, to who? To Timothy. The same way that Jesus, there are some prophecies concerning Jesus. In the Bible, we were told that about 333 prophecies concerning the birth and reign of Jesus Christ. And all these prophecies came to what? To fulfillment during the lifetime of Jesus Christ. You know, some people you know, always you know, argue that you know, Jesus was able to fulfill this just because he knew all those prophecies even before he was born. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But if you know that, you know, he got to a stage. He said, Lord, if it's, your, if, it's your, if it's not your will, let this word, let this cup pass over me. But at the end, he said what? Let your will be done. All those prophecies that was prophesied concerning him, came to pass. Likewise, too, there are some prophecies concerning Timothy. And Paul was reminding him. Hallelujah. Paul was reminding him of those prophecies. Likewise, too, as you are sitting down there, there are some prophecies specific to you. And there are some prophecies to your life, specific to you, to your career. To your family, to your children, to your business, or to your ministry. There are some specific prophecy. There are some prophecy that you even got true, but true, better by bad. Even during your naming ceremony, there are some prophecy that was spoken towards you. And those things will definitely come to fulfillment if you're able to write those things down. And there are some prophecies that you got through what? Through the man of God. You might be in a service like this. And the man, man of God might just be preaching. Say the word of God. And God will, re will eat your heart with what? With a revelation. You see the picture of it. And God will speak to your heart. Others around you may not hear. Others around you may not see what you are seeing. But you will catch the revelation. And it will be specific to you. So I don't know what are the prophecies that God has spoken to you. Either to your marriage. What is that prophecy concerning your career? You know at times you might see yourself. See somebody you just see yourself. God revealed that in so 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 time. You are going to be standing in front of thousands of people, talking to them. Praise the Lord. Amen. Talking to them. And you have received it, and you are asking yourself, when will this prophecy come to fulfillment? That was why I said that the prophecy is always what? Time bound. There is always a timing for the fulfillment 
or prophecy. So as you are sitting down there, what are those things? What are those prophecy of God concerning your life? And I want us to look at that Timothy again. It says, This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by death you may wage the good warfare. So, which means another thing we need to understand about the prophecy that we have. That's why we say that the power of your prophecy. Bible, Paul told Timothy that according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by death you may wage a good warfare. Hallelujah. Amen. So which means with the prophecy that you have, you, you can engage, engage in what? In warfare with it. Hallelujah. Amen. You can engage in what? In warfare with it. But many of us, we have those prophecy, they're just lying dormant. You are not speaking into it. You are not taking it into to God. No, you can take the prophecy of God concerning your life towards God. And that was what Daniel did. I want us to move down. Let's move down. Let's go back to the slide. Move up. Okay, let's look at Daniel chapter 2, verse 4. Here, I says you need to bring God to remembrance of his prophecies for your life. You could see in the book of Daniel chapter 9, verse 2 to 4. Let's read. Let's read that Daniel chapter 9, verse 2 to 4. It says, In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books the number of the years specified by the word of the Lord through Jeremiah the prophet that he will accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. Was that not what we read in the book of Jeremiah? Chapter 29. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We said that prophecy is what is time bound. That is timing for the fulfillment of prophecy. And here, Daniel was able to remind God. That's why the Bible says that at times when you have a vision, what do you do? You write it down and make it play. It was Daniel was able to get it by what? True books was able to do a kind of, what are the plan, what are the prophecies of God concerning Israel? And he brought it to God that you have said it by 70, at, at year 70, you are going to do what? There are going to be a release. Hallelujah. Amen. There are going to be a release. So, which means as a Christian, you need to, any prophecy of God for you, what do you need to do what? You need to write it down. When you write it down, you need to do what? You need to take it to God. In remembrance. These are what you said concerning my life. Also in marriage, when you get the prophecy of God concerning your life, when you are in it, when there is a challenge, when there is anything, you take it back to God. God, these are your prophecies concerning this. And God will do what? Will rise to action. Hallelujah. Amen. I want us to rise up in our faith. Because of our time. Just rise up on our faith. On your personal prophecy, you said it said you can do what? You can go to war with it. What are the other things you can do with, with your personal prophecy? You can put God in remembrance concerning it. Why can't you close your eyes at this hour and reflect on the past prophecies? That God has given you and put them and put God in remembrance. What are the prophecies of God concerning your life that you are yet to see manifesting in your life? Why can't you ask God this morning and put those prophecies in remembrance to God? Another thing you need to do this morning is to ask God for a fresh word, for a fresh prophetic word for the next phase of your life. 
ask God, the Lord, I need a prophetic word from you for the next phase of my life. I tell you, just a word can turn things around in your life. Why can't you open your mouth and speak your word, the word of God, over your career? Bible says, all things work together for good. Ask God this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so our Heavenly Father, we worship you this morning. We exalt you because you are the King of glory. Be the exalted Lord of Lord God in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we pray this morning, every prophecy concerning our life, Father, we pray you bring it to fulfillment in Jesus' name. Amen. And we pray this morning, the grace and the power to go to war, even with the prophecy you have given unto us, for us to achieve it. And for us to always put you in remembrance of those prophecies. You grant it unto us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you because you are the King of glory. We exalt you because you are the Lord of Lord. We thank you because all power belongs unto you. And we pray as from this moment, we will continue to see the fulfillment of your prophecies in our life, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.